What is your topic? Stranded on a deserted island. Okay, Thomas, Austin, Laney, are you ready to go? Yeah, ready. And proceed. Good morning. I'm glad to see that you're all here, be, are able to make it with us today. I want to thank you for booking your cruise through the Olivia Cruise Company. We offer one of the finest cruises in the whole area. And I want my main man Thomas over here to tell you a little bit about this great cruise. So on this cruise you will see there is an option of swimming and there are a lot of exotic foods and drinks and this just should be a very relaxing time on this wonderful cruise. But just in case the worst were to happen, some accident just like this and you end up like this guy right here, we've set up a couple steps for you just in case this were to happen. So the first step, and the most important in any survival situation, is to find fresh water. Fresh water has been called by Leonardo da Vinci as the driving force of all nature. But why is it that water is so important to us? Well, Hint.com informs us that 75% of our brain, 75% of our muscles, and 83% of our blood is all composed of water. So that's just a good indicator of how important water really is for bodies to keep functioning. And not only that, you can become dehydrated on a tropical island in as little as 24 hours. Or at the most, you have about three days before you're going to become dehydrated. So it's very important to find water. So while you're finding water, there's one very good indicator if there's going to be fresh water on the island. And that's going to be looking for other types of animal life. If you can see animals walking or running around the island, you know animals, just like us humans, need fresh water as well to survive. So if you follow these animals to see where they're drinking from, you could then in turn find a source of fresh water. If you can't happen to find a pool of fresh water anywhere, another option would be here in our solar water still. Now this is just a general idea of what you would have happen, but the idea behind it is that you're collecting rainwater from a large area because of course, if you cover a large area, you're going to collect more rainwater into a single spot like the cup is at here. And it's just more water for you to be able to drink. But if this doesn't work, then you can do what we have down here from Survive Nature. And this is a reverse osmosis system. This reverse osmosis system is a little different than what a lot of people would have in their houses. What a lot of people have in their houses is a system to filter out all the minerals that they have inside their water. Whereas here, we're putting ocean water in with salt in it into our reverse osmosis system. And basically, the condensation is going to come to the top, and the water is going to go back down to the bottom, leaving the salt inside the cup. You're going to need a few more materials to do this one, so it's a little more difficult if you're stranded on an island. But either way, you can still end up with fresh water on the bottom. And many people, when you start becoming very thirsty, it's going to be tempting to try to take a little bit of a drink from the ocean. That is a very bad idea for anybody to ever try, as that salt's just going to dry out your body even more. If you can't happen to find any fresh water, and you can't really make any fresh water from salt water, then you might be best off to spend your time and just looking to be rescued. Because like I mentioned before, you have about three days without any fresh water. So if you don't have that, you might just want to focus on becoming rescued. Uh, the second step, if you ever were to get stranded on an island, would be to find uh, supplies to make a fire. And according to the Art of Madness, How to Start a Fire Without Matches, 2008, a fire needs oxygen, heat, and fuel to run. So if you're straight on an island, what you should look for is any dry wood or dry twigs or dry leaves like that. Anything small that can burn would be ideal. Like if you're camping, you'd normally come up with newspaper, but that might not be an option if you're stranded on an island. I'm going to show you a few ways you can make one with, if you don't have any matches. The first way is the one hand drill. In this one, you'll make a tender nest, which is made out of your dry leaves, your dry twigs, things like that. And then you will make a notch in a piece of wood, and then you'll be spinning, like that you see here, spinning another piece of wood against it to try and make some sort of spark so that the tender nest will catch fire. And under your tender nest, you'll have a piece of bark or a piece of wood or something. So when you get that spark, then the piece of wood will catch on fire, and then that will keep going, and then your fire won't die out right away. And according to Great Wolf Survival, How to Build a Fire the Right Way, 2013, this is one of the best ways I've found you can make a fire. The second way 
is your two stone method. This way, you've all seen on movies where they strike two stones together to get a spark. Um, same thing as the last one, you make another tender nest out of your dry leaves, your dry twi twigs, stuff like that. And then you'll strike the two stones together. And what I found is, if you have a granite rock, that works ideal. So a granite rock with any other rock is good. And then you hold it close to your tender nest, so when you get that spark, it'll catch the nest on fire and then get your fire going. And according to Wildwood Survival, two stones fire starting, 2013, this is also a great way that you can start a fire. And then our third step is shelters. Um, when you're, ideally, if you could just find an empty cave or something, that'd be great. But I'm going to show you a few ways you can make a shelter if that's not an option. The first one is the Round Lodge. This shelter can help block wind, rain, cold, and the sun. There is a smoke hole, as you can see on top of here, so you can make a fire in your shelter to try and stay warm if where you're stranded because it can get pretty cold at night. Uh, you can add leaves around the edge of it, like around here, to add as an in insulation or things like that. And according to Outdoor Life's article, Survivor Shelters, 15 Best Designs and How to Build Them, 1015, this was one of the top five ways to make a shelter. The second one I'm going to talk about is the wiki up. This is a small teepee-like structure made with sticks and brush. And as you can see, you can add leaves or not, depending also on your climate. And how you make this, you um, have large sticks to start with, with a Y-shaped fork at top, and then you add those together. And then you go around, and then once you have the large ones put together, then you add in the smaller sticks to add in as insulation. And you can also add leaves varying. And according to how stuff works, how to build a shelter, this was also a great way to make a shelter. The third, third and final way is a leaf hut. This is a tent-like structure, so for laying down, in, and it's a two-sided wedge-shaped structure. And then you can make sure the sticks are very close so that your leaves or vegetation on the side don't fall through, because that would be very bad. And how to make this, you will have a 9 to 12 foot log at, as your structure here. And you place it against a rock or another tree to angle it up. And then you have your two Y-shaped forks at the end. And you'll just add in the sticks all the way down. And then add the thickness of your brush or vegetation depending on your climate and things like that. So your fourth step is going to be to find food. And according to Livestrong 2015, Depending on your weight and your size, it depends on how long you can survive without your food. Some people can last two months and some people can last three months. So one of the simplest things that you can find while you're on this island is obviously going to be fruit. You can look for your melons, your bananas, your coconuts, and your berries. But according to Outdoor Life 2015, you want to steer clear of holly and wild cherries because those are poisonous. And you're probably wondering, how do I know what's poisonous and what's not poisonous? According to The Telegraph 2014, here are a couple steps to help you. First, you're going to start by rubbing the food on the back of your hand. You're going to wait a couple minutes to see if there's a reaction. The reactions are either going to be like swelling on your hand, it's going to be a rash, it's probably going to turn red. And if you don't receive a reaction like this, you're going to continue by trying the food against your upper lip. Again, wait a couple minutes for your reaction. If you don't see any, you're going to try it against your tongue. You're not going to put it there or rub it against it. You're just going to put it there just a little bit. Again, wait a couple minutes to see if there's a reaction. After that, your biggest step is going to be happening when you put it just in your mouth. And then when you put it in your mouth, you're not going to want to chew it or anything like that. You're going to put it in, take it back out. Again, wait a couple minutes to see if there's a reaction. It is a pretty lengthy process, but it's going to be worth it because in your final steps, you're going to try and eat it and it could either go two ways. You could end up dying, or you could end up surviving off of this item and having, keeping yourself healthy. Another way is your fishing. You could either go spear fishing, you can use nets, or you can use this tactic right here. So when you go spear fishing, you're gonna wanna use a very sturdy um, stick. You can either sharpen the end of it to make it very sharp for when you stab things, or you can use a sharp rock and connect that to it using twine. 
Another option is your nets. Your nets can be made out of leaves or twine, anything that makes it easy for you to get them out of the water. And right here, this tactic, you're going to set it up while it's in low tide, and you're going to want to use a lot of rocks. And then when high tide comes back up, you're going to wait. And then once low tide goes back, there should be fish up in this area right here, which will make it very easy for you to catch them. And according to SASI 2014, Seaweed, oysters, mussels, crab, fish, and clams are all great options that you can find in the ocean. Another step that you can take is your hunting. You can use traps and spears. Of course, you're going to want to use a very sturdy spear just like this one right here. And your other option can be your traps. This is one trap that you can use. You're going to want to put bait inside of this trap so that when the animal sees it, it's going to go inside of it. You're obviously going to want to dig a hole so that it's going to be trapped inside of it, obviously. So then this will go down under it. You're going to want to check this trap at least a couple hours every day so that you don't want it to escape or anything like that. And some things that you can hunt while you're on the island are boar, mice, rabbits, and you can collect bird eggs. Obviously, you're going to have to cook and pre prepare these things. So if you don't prepare them well enough, you could obviously get very sick. You can cook them over a fire using Thomas's way of making a fire, and you're going to want to evenly cook them, remove all the hair, remove the bones you don't want on them, and the inside organs. Our step number five of surviving is going to be protection. Now first I'm going to recap a little bit on Thomas's, on his shelters in a form of protection. Depending on what kind of an island you're at, you may want your shelter up in the air. And this is simply to keep insects, rodents, snakes, everything from climbing over you while you're sleeping. But if you're not dealing with littler animals like that, and you have bigger animals, you may want to put a fire around your shelter, and this is just to ward off other animals and let them know that you're there in the spot sleeping. You can also set up sticks around your shelter that are easy to break, and this once again, if you have large animals coming in, they're going to snap these sticks, and you're going to know that they're right there. Or you can carry, you also probably want to carry a big stick along with you for other big animals, just if you have to ward yourself off a little bit to keep a little bit of distance between you and another large animal. Protection from the sun this is a very important part of the protection side of things. And the National Institute of Health tells us that you can become sunburnt in as little as 15 minutes. So because of this, you might want to spend most of your time during the day underneath your shelter just to stay out of the sun, and then early in the mornings or late at night then, you might want to go out and get everything done that you have to do. You'll also be able to conserve your water better if you stay inside during when it's hot outside. Knowing what types of plants to use and not to use is another important thing. One example of this would be the aloe vera plant. Aloe vera is actually found in quite a few tropical islands, and we use that pretty commonly here in the United States for different types of lotions. We'll use it on sunburn, you can use it for insect bites, whatever you need in these situations. But the number one most important rule of any survival situation, and also for protection, is having just a positive state of mind for whatever you're going to encounter. If you follow all these protection tips, it's going to help you a lot more in just being able to keep that positive state of mind. Because if you have sunburn or you have mosquito bites or a different type of rash from a poisonous plant, the whole time you're going to be working throughout the day, that's all you're going to be thinking about is how much you itch or how bad it hurts. So you'll be best off if you can follow these and always keep a positive state of mind. So the very last step that you're going to take is your sixth step. This step is being rescued. It should be the step that you focus on mostly. The first thing that you should focus on is being able to survive, obviously. But just in case, here are two ways that you can obviously get rescued. First way is your SOS, which is a distress signal. You're going to want to use very heavy, heavy objects, either rocks or chunks of wood, and you're going to want to set them up in this shape so that when ships and planes are going by, it's going to be very visible to them so that they can see this. Another way, according to the Men's Magazine 2013, is your three triangle setup. You're going to want to have these triangles at least 100 feet away from each other, and you're going to want the fires as big as possible. You're going to spend your days setting up these fires, and you're going to want, during the day, to have smoke coming up. So you're going to have wet twigs and wet leaves, anything wet to get a lot of smoke, just to make it very, very visible. This is also a very big distress signal. 
And the very last thing you should worry about while you're on the island is building a raft because that is one of the un like, most unsafe things that you can do. You can get lost at sea, you can run out of things to eat, and the worst things could happen is you could get attacked by something in the ocean. But now, just to review our steps right here. So just to review a little bit, the first thing you want to do if you ever happen to get stranded on an island would be to find a water source. And if you can't find a fresh water source, you'll want to go through Austin's methods of trying to get salt water clean and able to drink. The second step would be to find materials to build a fire. Building a fire and keeping warm is a very important thing and you could also use it as a sort of protection to keep the animals away from you and things like that. The third step would be to make a shelter. Obviously if you could just find a cave that was empty or things like that, that would be ideal. Easier, less work, you could focus on making your fire and getting water and other things like that. But if you can't find that, then you'll have to make a shelter with using large um, logs and things like that. Just uh, keep protected from everything else. The next step you should take is finding your food, finding things that you're most comfortable eating, and maybe the easiest things that you can find to eat. Remember, you're going to want to cook them thoroughly so that you don't end up getting sick when you don't have to be sick. And your fifth one is your protection. You're not only going to be protected by the animals around, you're also going to have to be protected by the sun. So you need to find your aloe, you need to stay out of the sun, anything to keep you from getting sunburned. And your sixth one is going to be rescue. You can use two of the ways that I have set up here, or you can obviously make your raft, which I would not suggest. We thank you for joining us here today. If you have to remember one thing about this speech, we want you to remember that the positive state of mind is the number one in any survival situation. We also hope that you learned a few tactics in case you ever happen to become stranded. Even though we're sure nothing like this could ever possibly happen on your cruise, we want to thank you for choosing the Olivia Cruise Company and enjoy your cruise. Thank you.